is my Melly Heaton, owner and founder of Never Stay in LLC. I'm a licensed medical social worker. And we specialize in the treatment of complex PTSD through shamanic Reiki and uh, <laughs> mental health services, basically. I was going to specify, but it's fine. Anyhow, this might be taboo. This will probably trigger people, which I think the point of speaking about this is to help people work through their triggers. Very me, I am stepping more and more into speaking about controversial things, which really is something that I'm really passionate about. And I intend to do this really respectfully. And in a way that I invite you to think about your thoughts and how to challenge them to help you identify what's holding you back and pull it. Uh, I'll help you along with your progress. Okay, cool. So, there's this saying, I can't remember exactly what it is, I feel like it might have been in Maya Angelou, but it's like, treat children or people as they are, and they will remain the same, but treat them as you envision them, or as a higher sense, or as you would have them be, as the ideal vision of them, and they'll step into that, in other way. And so, I'm going to say it these ways, I know this doesn't resonate for everybody, there's that, right? So it's, I'm pretty sure, like I said, I think it's Maya Angelou, and then there's... Law of attraction would say that wherever your attention goes, that's gonna grow, right? And then psychology talks about the expectancy bias. It's like when you expect something to happen, it's gonna happen, right? Or the placebo effect, or whatever. I don't know. There's a lot of. It's been a while. It's been like I don't know, almost ten years since I've been doing that. It's been a while since I studied psychology. Anyway, I uh, say that to so, say so, no. Definitely over 10 years, like 15. Um, I think with labels, what bothers me is that it puts people in a box, right? If I call you poor, then that's going to put you in a box, like you're poor. Right? You can choose to accept that, or you can choose not to accept it. But if you do accept it, it's going to depend on what your meaning of the word means. Is it limiting? Is it not limiting? Right? That kind of thing. And. Sorry, I'm going to work out some here. And. Yeah, maybe that's not a big deal. But you look at other labels, or you know, I think. A lot of the time, what the labels do with the energy behind them is, is that you're a victim. And if I'm sitting here and I'm telling you that you're a victim, I want to look at what my intent is behind calling you a victim, right? Am I saying that to honor and validate your emotional experience? Like, hey, you were a victim of this thing, and part of you needs to heal it so that you can grieve. I think that's one thing. But if I say, hey, you're a victim, and then I pity you, the first one is empathy. I'm with you in that feeling. If I pity you, then I'm just empowering you. And to a certain degree, I can even enable you. Right? It goes from, it's a fine line between like advocacy and then enabling. Like if I... I had a younger sibling. Right? And, because I, I guess this happens, this is something that I've read about in textbooks, it's like, I, I have a younger sibling, they're maybe like a year, <coughs> so like three years younger than me or something, I'm like, oh yeah, um, she doesn't really talk, it's fine, tell me, oh, this is what she's saying, and I do the translating, it's like, okay, maybe on one hand, it is developmentally appropriate to say, oh, she doesn't have words yet, but then it reaches a point after that where, my sister is using me as a crutch to communicate for her and I'm reinforcing that pattern by communicating for her and there's this whole thing right but I'm getting something out of that in psychological field social work, social work field it's called secondary gain I get something out of it people are like oh you're such a good sister you translate for her and things like that right I think we can see how we can kind of generalize it a little bit I'm sure maybe it's just like developmentally appropriate but it could become a speech delay and then we're talking about something else and then it's like oh my sister has a disability and then oh I'm such a good sister and oh, praise me 
you know, I'm, I'm just so great, and things like that, but I mean, I think at the end of the day, you get to choose, and that's what I'm inviting you to do. What are the labels you're using to identify yourself? What is the purpose of using those labels? In what ways is it helping you, and in what ways is it limiting you? And then I encourage you to be intentional and, and, and to reflect upon the words that you use to describe other people. Something that I never liked. If you don't know this, I, I rarely subscribe to pop culture. I rarely go with that. I don't like it anymore because they don't resonate with me. But like one that I never liked was calling somebody a hot mess. Like I understand that it's validating to say, oh, I'm a hot mess, because when I do have a lot of things going on, I feel overwhelmed, I feel stressed, I feel frazzled. That's different, right? But if you say, I'm a hot mess, what does that mean? I'm a ball of chaos? Or to call somebody else a hot mess, like, what are you saying? Are you saying that they're incapable? Like, what are you saying? And I'm not accusing anyone, I'm just inviting you all to reflect. If you so choose, maybe you don't, and that's okay. Mm. and your intentionality behind the words that you speak because we can either speak life into other people or we can speak death really and damnation into other people alright so I have for today if you have any feedback that's respectful right you can ask in an open ended way in a in an open way not accusing or anything like that because I'm not going to tolerate any hate speech on this channel and I'll just delete it and block. <clears throat> but like, if you have questions on the topic, feel free to post them. Uh, feel free to like, share, subscribe for more info for booking anything like that. Go to Love Is Healing LLC. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook at Love Is Healing LLC. All right, thank you.